What started off as a normal day for our first patient has ended up with a trip to accident and emergency. Luckily, they've come to the right place. For you. In Liverpool, nine-year-old Charlie is in hospital with a painful elbow. See? Painful. So, what have you done to it? I tried to do a leaf frog, but my pants were too far down because he had heavy stuff in my pocket. You did what? He did a leapfrog, but his pants were too low down. Hang on, let's get this story straight. Charlie was on his way home from school with his cousin. They saw some bollards up ahead and had a great idea. That explains the light bulbs, then. They were going to leapfrog. That explains the frogs, then. Yes, but as Charlie leapt into the air, his trousers got caught and he fell smack onto the ground. Ouch. Enter Dr Sarah Piper. She'll examine that arm to find out what's wrong with it. We had sort of the minute saw there. Yeah, this is a bit worried you might have broken this bone. The bottom of your humerus, which is this, this long bone here. My dream come true. Hey, your dream come true? Not playing for Liverpool or winning an Oscar? Broken bones can be pretty serious, you know. Well, an X-ray is the only way to find out if Charlie's dream really has come true. Keep nice and still there for me. The bone Charlie may have broken is the humerus. Running from the shoulder to the elbow, it's the fourth longest bone in your body. Often called the funny bone, the humerus has a nerve running through it very close to the skin. And that's why when you bang your elbow, you get that funny tingly sensation. With Charlie's x-rays done, Dr Sarah delivers her verdict. I'm afraid it is broken. Get in. <laughs> What's the matter with this boy? It looks like Charlie's crazy, I've broken my arm badly dream is alive and well. He's got a little break to humerus the long bone of his arm just above the elbow joint. It's not in too bad a position, so hopefully we'll be able to get away with just putting it in a cast. Shall we get in a cast now? Yep. Oh, <laughs> oh, so it's the cast you wanted. Right, that's the dream. But hold on a moment. I just need to have a little word with the bone doctors just to make sure they're happy with the x-ray because sometimes they want to put wires in. Right, so sometimes it does need a little like operation. I don't think an operation was part of the dream, but it could be the only way to make that arm heal properly. Still, his dream comes temporarily true with a temporary cast. But Charlie has to stay in hospital overnight so that the doctors can decide whether he'll need an operation or not. Ooh, that looks painful. Medical teams always expect the unexpected, but no one was expecting this. In the waiting room is nine-year-old Lauren with her family, and she's bitten off more than she can chew. I swallowed a clip. A what? It was a hair clip. Mm -hmm. I took it out of my hair mm -hmm. to get my hair flat, and then I swallowed it, and mm -hmm. then it Hang on. Let's get this story straight. Lauren was at home sitting on the sofa watching TV with her granddad. I don't think he's watching the program. Someone else isn't watching the show either. Hmm. Anyway, whilst Lauren was watching the telly, she took her hair clip out of her hair, as you do. Yep. But what she's about to do isn't the best of ideas. I know. She likes chewing clips, and she was busy playing with this one in her mouth when all of a sudden she accidentally swallowed it, and it's never been seen since. Oh, dear. Ouch. What does Grandad have to say about all this? Well, she suddenly jumped up and ran out. But, uh, my grand was in the kitchen. I was still eating paper, so I didn't even know what had happened. <laughs> A lot of help you were, Grandad. But at least someone's taking it seriously. She put clips in her mouth, what's very naughty and bad. You got it. Anyway, with this clip lurking somewhere inside you, Lauren, we need to get you checked out pronto. And here's the man for the job. Over to Dr Tom Sibalskis. And how big was it? Can you show me? Well, I think it was that big. Right now. OK. Hair yeah. clips are yeah. about that big, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, OK. Probably a couple of inches, yeah. you think. So quite big, actually. Yeah. OK. Oh, I'm glad we sorted that out. And if you swallow, does it feel uncomfortable? Um, yeah. It does. And what we need to work out is whether or not the hair clip is stuck in the throat or whether it's actually gone down into a stomach. When you swallow something, it goes down your throat, 
into your esophagus or food pipe and then into your stomach. Lauren's hair clip might already have done this journey. But if it's still in her throat, it could go down her trachea or windpipe and end up in her lungs, which would cause her to choke. Did it feel like it went all the way down when you swallowed it? No, it didn't feel like it. Doesn't it, like it doesn't feel like it went all the way down. Okay, now I'm just going to pop this on your tongue. Just say ah. Ah. Okay, I can't see anything there at all. Well, apart from her tongue and teeth, obviously. But to try to find out where on earth that clipper's got to, Dr. Tom has what might seem like a harebrained idea. Okay, Lauren, we've got this little gadget. It's a metal detector. and help us work out which part of you we need to x-ray to find where the hair clip's gone. Listen out for the beeps, everyone. Bingo! Yep, we've got a belly beep. But at least we can give her throat the all clear, which is good news. Sometimes when we swallow things that are a little bit pointy or a little bit sharp, it can feel like they're stuck. Yeah. But actually, what that feeling is, it's where it's scraped or scratched the lining of, of your food pipe. And actually, it may have gone down, it may be in the stomach. So her throat's clear, but this investigation isn't over yet. Dr Tom needs to find out exactly where the clip is in Lauren's belly to make sure it won't cause a dangerous blockage in the narrowest part of her intestines. So it's off to X-ray. We'll be back later to see how she gets on. In the emergency department, the team are ready for their first patient. Let's meet him. At the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, Jack is in with his mum and dad, but it's no ordinary day for him. It's my birthday today nine. Well, happy birthday, fella. But what's brought you into hospital on your special day? A sausage finger. Ooh, I love sausages. Not this kind, Zand. Look away now if you're squeamish, because that's a photo of Jack's finger on his mum's phone. Ugh. Not your ordinary sausage. Let's find out how the birthday boy's digit got damaged. It was an ordinary Saturday. Hang on, Zand. I thought it was Jack's birthday. Oh, yeah. It was the most special day of the year. That's more like it. Jack received some money for his birthday, and the plan was to buy a special toy. A flying dinosaur, perhaps. Awesome! So Jack hopped in the car and headed straight to the toy shop. Sounds harmless. Where's this story going, Zand? To the toy shop, Chris. Whoa! Did you see that? But when he arrived, Jack got out of the car and in the excitement, he closed the door on his finger. Ouch! But what about Jack's birthday party, Mum? We can't celebrate the birthday today, so we're going to have to have another one when his finger's better. Two birthdays. Result. On hand to mend Jack's mitt is Dr Anne Markey. Right, shall we have a look at this finger, then? Tell the lady what I call your finger. Sausage finger. <laughs> sausage finger. You won't be having sausages for birthday tea, then? No. That's Mum's dinner plans out the window. You can say you've been fighting crocodiles. Crocodiles? There's well-known crocodiles in Manchester. I had no idea. She's just kidding, Zand. Phew. But how is Dr Anne going to fix the damaged digit? We'll take that nail off. Um, underneath the nail, where you can see the bruise, it's likely that there's a laceration there, a cut in the nail bed. So we'll put some stitches in. We'll probably put the nail back on, but it's not there to retake or regrow. It's just there to protect. All that will happen in an operation tomorrow. In the meantime, to stop any infection, Jack's having his whole hand bandaged up. I smell like a sandwich. Sausage butty. Sausage butty. Mmm, I love a sausage butty too. Well, that's the hard work done for today. And then we'll let you go home for some special birthday tea. Ooh, can we come? We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. We'll see you before your operation. Let's see who's turned up in accident and emergency. This is not for the squeamish. <laughs> At Alderhey Hospital in Liverpool, 13-year-old Scott has come in with an injured leg. I thought it was a scratch. I turned down to look at my leg and it was a big chunk of my leg missing. How on earth did you do that? Scott was out riding his mountain bike with his friends. What a mountain? Hello, goatee. Don't be ridiculous, Zand. They were just in the street. Righto. Um, they're not wearing helmets. I know, Zand. They were doing wheelies to see who could go the furthest. 
Whoa, dangerous stuff. Yep, and Scott was mid-wheelie when suddenly his foot slipped off the pedal and his leg scraped on the gear cog. Oh, well, he's lucky he didn't fall on his head. Is he OK? Well, at first he thought it was just a scratch, but when he saw it, he cried out. Ouch! OK, so how bad is this cut? You can almost see his bone. It's quite shocking, really, <laughs> to look at. Ooh, it does sound bad. Let's see. OK, Zond, if you're squeamish, look away now. Whoa! It's a huge cut! Must be sore. So next, Scott needs an X-ray to check his bones. There's the big hole right there, but luckily nothing's broken. The worry now is possible tendon damage. Tendons are what holds muscle to bone, and a tear to them could affect the movement of Scott's foot. Here to check that out is Dr. Ankur Sinha. Can I just ask you to move your toes a bit? They're wiggling. Well, that's good news. And can you move your foot? The movement of his foot suggests that the tendons are intact, uh, but we still cannot be sure because if they are partially teared, we would still need to uh, repair it. That's one of the concerns at the moment. Then we'll make him comfortable and then await uh, for further action to take to theater. Yeah. So Scott's having an operation to fix the hole in his leg and make sure there's no other major damage. We'll see how he gets on later in the show. Let's see who's turned up in Accident and Emergency. And this is not for the squeamish. <laughs> this way to Alder Hay Hospital in Liverpool, where 14-year-old Alex has hurt his arm. Ooh, it's bendy. What happened? Take my ball, save the goal, and break my arm. You broke your arm saving a goal? That must have been some kick. Let's see what happened. Alex was playing in a five-a-side football match at school. Was he magic with the ball, like Messi? No, Zond, he was saving the ball like... Like... Like a brilliant goalkeeper, making lots of great saves, leaping left and right. Then one boy, the strongest kicker on the pitch, took a shot. Whoa, that ball's moving like a rocket! On a one-way mission to the back of the net. But Alex had other plans. He threw his hands out for a save, the ball crashed right into his arm and bent it. Ouch! Alex is off to X-ray to check on the damage. That's brilliant. You're doing really well. <laughs> OK, hold on. To deliver the results is bone specialist Dr Vinesh Selvaratnam. So, he's, what he's got, he's got a fracture of both the bones. He certainly has. What we're going to try and do, see whether we can give him something to just sedate him, give it a pull and put a plaster, OK? If this is successful, Alex won't need an operation. When a bone breaks, sometimes it moves out of its normal position. With a double break like Alex's, your arm can look bendy because the bones have overlapped. When this happens, they need to be pulled apart and then slotted back together like a jigsaw so they heal nicely. That's the plan for Alex. Let's see how he gets on later. In the emergency department, the medical team are ready for their first patient. Well, let's go meet him! All right, here he comes. Nine-year-old Ethan is in accident and emergency with his dad and stepmom. So what's with the sunglasses? Last night, I felt really dizzy. Then this morning, I went to go give my mum a hug and I just fell down. Ah, so are the sunglasses helping with his head? Well, Chris, I'm glad you asked, because I've been working really hard on this one. <clears throat> Ethan had a severe headache which lasted all night. He woke up in the morning and still didn't feel right. Wait, is this a poem? Yes, it is. Everything Ethan looked at seemed far too bright, so he put on some sunglasses to block out the light. Ah, so that explains the shades. He fell over when he tried to stand up right. He was very wobbly and it gave him a fright. Yikes. So what next? He's left his mum's and he's off to his dad's. Yes, but Ethan couldn't step up to his dad's front door. His head was hurting more and more. Very good, Zahn, but ouch. Here to find the culprit causing Ethan's mystery headaches is top doctor Reddy Ilavala. So, Ethan, how are you feeling now? Now I feel all right. All right, yeah. But when I was walking earlier, yeah. I had a really bad headache. So if the headache, you know, 
if it comes, how long it lasts for? Well, last time I had a headache, lasted for like two weeks. There could be many offenders causing Ethan's head to hurt. It could be a viral infection, sinusitis or dehydration. But other symptoms, such as sensitivity to light, can mean something more serious. So Dr. Reddy needs to do some tests to rule this out. Ah, that's what you look like, Ethan. First, he takes a look at the back of Ethan's eyes. If there's any raised pressure in his brain, this area could become enlarged. My dad is sticking his tongue out. <laughs> With the back of Ethan's eyes looking fine, Dr. Reddy checks they're working normally. N T O. With no obvious problems, further investigation will be required. We have to keep him in the hospital and do further tests and exactly find out what is it. We'll be back later to see if the doctors can unravel the riddle of Ethan's mystery headaches.